Hi, I'm Nigel Griffiths, I work in Power Systems ATS Europe. In this movie we'll be looking at the Virtual I.O. Server version 223, in particular the part command which is the VIO Server Advisor. This is my VIO Server on the Orange Machine, I'm logged in as P Admin. We'll just check the iOS level. This is the latest at the moment, it came out at the end of 2013, so this is 223. Okay, if we just type in the part command, it gives us a nice little hint uh, of what to do, and it's fairly simple. We're just going to run the part command here for the interval, 10 to 60 minutes, um, and uh, we're going to use uh, level 2 to give us some more detailed logging. Can't imagine why we want to do less. But okay, so we'll run part minus i, we'll run a quick one. And um, it just sits here for 10 minutes, so it's not like it's very exciting. And we'll just let that run. Okay, just finished. Uh, there's a gap there of uh, 10 minutes. And it's very nicely told us where the data went into. If we just have a look at the uh, P admin home user, here we can see the output file. And here's what I did earlier. I have an uh, end one running as well. But uh, this is the file we actually want to have a look at. Uh, just like before, if we do a tar, we just look at the files in that. Much the same as before. The important uh, file is at the top here. It's here. This is the report XML file. We also have an advisor report. And there's a few subdirectories full of uh, little images that we use in the report. So we can pull this to a workstation with a browser and um, open the tar file and then click on this XML file or we can take this file to a web server and view it there again via a browser. So here I've double clicked on a file on my Windows workstation in here. The files um, all along here. It's just the VO server advisor report XML file and this is what you get. Um, I think uh, it, Internet Explorer gives you a pop-up and you have to say you're happy to run this thing. There's a link here to the workload estimator, that just takes you to the website. Um, it's going to be pretty painful showing you this um, in this uh, small window in here. But down here we have uh, the um, type of machine in here, 4.2 uh, gigahertz. The, this server is the VO server, it's two cores, maximum four. And here's the level, 223. Um, and we have some of the data that we've had in the past. So we got uh, disk and network uh, averages when they're busy in the peak and things. We got some fiber channel adapter stats down in here. Um, if it's uh, I, it's just information, so it's uh, um, configuration and uh, little green ticks mean it's all okay. Um, down here we have the VO server disks. It has 13. These are local disks and LUNs. Um, I'm using the shared storage pool, so some of those are LUNs uh, in that. Pass means it's okay, it hasn't uh, had this problem of uh, blocked I.O. because of uh, queuing and things. If we nip over to the right hand side, we have um, CPU information in here. It's entitled to 0.4. Um, and what is it actually using? It used 60% uh, of that. And uh, the high, it used two and a half times that because we can, uh, it's uncapped, it actually says it there. We're going um, over our entitlement. It does say um, variable capacity weight, uh, 128. The VO servers are very important for the performance of a box. So we tend to like you to put the weight up a bit, maybe 200 or something. So it grabs extra CPU if it has to, as it's working on behalf of everyone. Over here it says the risk of changing that is uh, very low. The impact is like to be very large, so it's worth doing no risk. In here, the other settings are okay. Down here we have the uh, shared processing pool for the CPUs. Uh, I'm not using pools, so there's nothing in there. Uh, there would be if they if they are switched on. Oh, look at this red cross, real memory. I have two gig. It says three and a quarter gig would be better. Um, so it is recommending a change there, and it thinks it's important. Um, risk is uh, low in changing the real memory. Uh, impact is uh, sort of moderate rather than high uh, impact as it doesn't actually see a problem, it just thinks it should be a bit higher given what it's detected uh, us doing. This is a new section in here for the shared storage pools. So we have my shared storage pools is a quarter of a terabyte and I'm only using 9%. This is my crash and burn server, so uh, or 
set of VIO servers, so uh, that's not a surprise. And it's, these are the uh, the various client logical units that has been set up, and it's not even using much of those. I think these are uh, 64 gigabytes, and using a fraction of that to run two copies of AIX. And this one isn't in use at all yet. Thin provisioning uh, in action here, and so we're only using 9% of our uh, pool called Pacific. Uh, down in here, this is new again, shared storage adapters, um, and it's highlighting uh, a few little things in here. See this little button here, uh, if we can uh, get more detail if we drill in with the, the plus. And it's telling me here that the C on ENT2, um, and what's going on, there's a warning in here, here it is. Um, we haven't got the large um, receive uh, set in here, it's disabled at the moment, and... Uh, it reckons it should be enabled and flow control should be enabled as well. That's good. two good points. Uh, I could get a performance benefit by uh, switching these things on. If we click on the little uh, question mark in here, we get a pop-up. Oops, it's slightly off the screen. Let's try again. There's a little pop-up saying, what does this mean? And it actually tells you uh, the command you have to run to get this to do. Yes, you have to um, sh sh stop the, the network, set it, and, and restart the, uh, the network. Okay, so uh, that's pretty good. And... Uh, each question mark gives you an explanation of the statistics and how to make the setting. You click on the X or hit escape to come out. So lots of uh, useful information in here and lots of hints on how I can improve things, give me warnings about things that could be causing problems. So I don't want to just run this on one VO server now and again. I want all VO servers to have this running at their peak hour every day. So I was thinking we need to automate this. I don't want to log in and FTP this file to my workstation and have a look at it for 50 VO servers. I want to automate the whole thing. But of course that output file I could put directly on a website. So just as a little experiment, I just copied that tar file and unpacked it on my web server. Um, here's the advisor report file ready to go. Um, and the other files in that. Now, of course, this is just an experiment. I could make this prettier and have a list of all my VO servers and then drill down to this sort of level. If I click on here, I actually have the Enmon data. Ah, that's really cool. I know what I'm doing here now. I can actually just then pull that down and uh, save that as a local file and then run the analyzer on it, for example. Or I could then just click on the report file and I get the same report as I did uh, before. Um, if I had a bigger screen, I wouldn't have to scroll about quite so much, but it's all the uh, the important data is there. So this is really cool. I think we're going to set this up. We just need a mechanism for sending the reports off to the web server. I'll probably use NFS to do that. And that's it. If you want more movies from me, YouTube slash user Nigel A. R. Griffiths. If you want to tweet to me on the Power Processor, Power VM, Virtual I/O servers and AIX, then my handle is Mr underscore Enmon. And you can also find my AXPert blog at this URL.